This week is the portion of Chukas Balak. It's a double portion. Ezra the scribe combined portions as needed to facilitate the reading of certain specific portions at specific times of the year. Those portions which he put together have a natural connection. So therefore follows that Chukas and Balak have a natural connection. The portion of Chukas begins with the laws of the red heifer, which were used for uh, purification of a person who had come in contact with a dead body, which then would allow them to enter the temple. The portion of Balak describes how a Midianite king hired a non-Jewish prophet to curse the Jews. Where's the connection? The portion is called Chukas. Chukas means statutes, laws, ordinances. They're those commandments which we have no idea why we do them. The Almighty said, I've given you the reasons and rationale behind so many commandments. Trust me on these few. And there are, there are only just a few of them. Rashi comments, Chuka, explaining this word, Chuka, Gezerah Chakakti, I engraved this decree. Meaning it has to be steadfast within us. Even though we don't understand it, it is still an intrinsic and inherent part of us. What was the deal with Balak? Balak was a Midianite king who was afraid the Jews were going to wipe him out. It's absolutely completely unwarranted and it may be discussed later. Balak, in order to get on God's good side, offered 42 sacrifices to God. Those 42 sacrifices were accepted not that Balak was able to curse the Jews, but the Almighty appreciated his attempt at getting close. Because doing a good thing, even for the wrong reason, is still a good thing. Balak was paid quite regally by the Almighty for those sacrifices. Great granddaughter of his was Ruth. Ruth's great grandson was King David. King David's progenitor will be the Mashiach. So for 42 sacrifices that Balak offered, he merited to be the great-great-grandfather of the Mashiach, of the righteous Redeemer. And it is in the portion of Balak that we are told of the eventual and imminent coming of the Mashiach. This concept of Mashiach and waiting for Mashiach is also a hook, something which we are told will happen. We're not exactly sure when. We're told any minute. We believe every minute. But it is such an inherent part of us. It is so much of us that it is intrinsic to our being. So indeed, we have the chukais, those laws which are beyond our understanding. And we have the concept of Mashiach's coming, which is so much a part of us. We do these mitzvahs in an attempt to get closer to God. As the Talmud said, if Balak, who only offered 42 sacrifices, was rewarded in such a way, imagine what's in store for those people who do things for the right reason. For the Uparsha, I'm Herschel Finman.